Want to learn how to make 55,000 in 14 weeks? In this video, you will find out. Hello and welcome back. My name is Eric Stewart. I made this channel to give you guys the tools to create financial freedom for yourself through real estate investing and to take you along with me on my real estate investing journey. So if you're new here, introduce yourself in the comments section below, ask a question, or tell me what you want to learn about for real estate investing. If you guys are coming back to my channel, welcome back. There's going to be so much good, valuable information in this video. So if you learned something, hit the subscribe button and join the club here and make sure you stick around to the very end because I show you how much that $55,000 grew after just one year of ownership. Now let's get into it. Okay, so how did I find this deal? If you haven't heard of direct mail marketing, it's basically just sending letters to homeowners asking them if they've considered selling their house. So I remember this pretty clearly. I was driving around looking for houses in good neighborhoods but looked really bad from the street. And at the time, I only wrote down about 100 addresses. I wrote handwritten letters on yellow legal paper and mailed them all out. And I sent them to the owners, asking them if they wanted to sell it to me. And the whole process from driving around to handwriting to mailing took about three or four days and about $100 in stamps. I have a whole video on my channel for direct mail marketing. So if you want to do a deep dive into that topic, go check that out. So here's an example of what we sent and the homeowner called me a few days after I sent the letters. So when I spoke with the seller over the phone, I just want to get to know him a little bit, build some rapport, try to understand the situation he's dealing with, and let him know that I'm an investor and what my plans would be for the house. The owner said he owned it for about seven years, but it had been left vacant for the last two years. He tried to do some repairs and some maintenance and stuff, some updates, but the house was in really bad shape, the foundation was horrible, and this was pretty much in line with what I saw when I was doing the driving for dollars. So after setting the appointment, I met him over at the property where I toured the whole thing, ran my numbers on what the repair cost would be, took a bunch of pictures, and I got to know him a little bit more and his situation. I asked a bunch of questions to try and figure out how I could help him the best, and what his timeline was, how much he wanted for the house, and how much he thought the repairs would cost to make. So I went home and ran the numbers right away, it's important to do this stuff really quick after the walkthrough while it's fresh in the seller's mind. I determined that the ARV or after repair value would be about $125,000 and the city assessed value was right around $81,000. I take a look at that for informational purposes only, but it's not super accurate a lot of the time. So after determining the ARV, I also look at holding costs. How long is it gonna to take to fix this place up and how many expenses do I have monthly during that cost. For example, principal and interest on the loan payment, your insurance and your taxes, plus your utility payments also have to be broken down. To get an idea of how to estimate all these numbers, insurance, you can ask a few insurance agents for quotes and then just take the total quote, divide it by 12, that's your monthly payment. For utilities, that's kind of more of a guessing game based on experience, but you could also ask other investors or look it up on YouTube. For taxes, that's all on the city website, so just go check that out, divide it by 12, and then there you go, there's your monthly. And then for the biggest part, your principal and interest payment from your loan, a lot of times I'll have an interest only payment, so then there's no principal, but you just have to figure out what loan you're gonna get and what the payment would be. There's a couple online tools I like to use, like a mortgage calculator online. You just enter in the total loan amount that you think it's gonna be, and then the interest rate, and then the amortization, so how many years the loan payment is, over 20 years or 30 years. So in this case, my monthly holding cost expenses were insurance, 75 bucks a month, taxes, $100 a month, utilities, $100 a month approximately, and my loan payment was about $402 a month. So all combined, that came to $677 a month. I estimated it would take about four months to do the whole rehab, so that number total, grand total, is $2708. For closing costs, I just estimated $500 in title work, $500 in loan fees, and then an origination fee on the loan for about $500 too. So all in about $1,500. I didn't need to get perfect, just enough to figure out what my offer price is gonna be. So the last step for me after seeing the house was determining how much profit that I needed to build into the deal. This one needed a lot of work and it was gonna be a long rehab, so I wanted to put in a little bit more buffer, so I ended up putting about $30,000 for profit margin. So my main goal with every property that I offer on is to try to complete the Burr strategy, 
which if you don't know what that is, it stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, then repeat. So you're essentially getting a free house by finding a good deal, fixing it up and pulling all of your money out with a new bank loan. So that was my goal on this house and I was running the numbers that way too to see if it would work. The two most important questions I ask myself when considering the burst strategy is how much am I gonna be all in for on the deal and will the property cash flow after it's all fixed up? So spoiler, the answer in this case is no. I'd be losing money every month with a $100,000 loan. It turns out that the max loan on this deal would be about $60,000. If you run the rental analysis using a $100,000 loan, you have to determine if the rent you get out of the property will be enough to cover that full loan. A simple spreadsheet is all it really takes to figure out what rent will cover and your loan payments and all the other expenses. So this is a spreadsheet we use to do income minus expenses to figure out our net cash flow. This is also important because the bank will need it. A business banker will wanna see that the property cash flows properly and the amount of money you can make from that property before you even do the deal. So again, start with the end in mind. I ran rental comparables. I looked at other houses similar to what this house would be all fixed up in that area to see what they were renting for. I came to the conclusion that this property would support about $1,000 monthly rent. So with that $1,000 monthly rent income coming in, and that's the highest it'll go, the loan that the property could support would be about $60,000. So you always want to cash flow, and up to you how much you want to cash flow, but a good rule of thumb is a couple hundred bucks at least. If you break even, that's not good, and if you lose money, then that's not a deal. So making the offer and getting a bank loan. I called the sellers back later that day and offered $20,000. They countered at $22,000 and I accepted their counter offer. Okay, so next I got to work on rehabbing and renting the house. So by this time I developed a scope of work and I had a plan of attack. The foundation needed work. The house needed a new furnace, water heater, electrical work, gas lines, siding, insulation, drywall, bathroom, kitchen, paint, flooring, lighting, everything. This house needed the whole works. Check out the other video on my channel for the before and afters of this house. Okay, so big pro tip here, just real quick. Double check to make sure you're on the same page with your contractors because I had a contractor bid out my basement repair and it was about $15,000, but he had included the whole basement to be braced and I was supposed to line out what I didn't want and I just forgot to line something out and it cost me an extra $4,000. It was a huge mistake on my part and it was pretty brutal because it's avoidable. You know, some things, if I had no idea, I could maybe get over it, but it was my own fault and I just had to eat that one. So moving forward with the rehab, after spending four months on the renovations, I went looking for a tenant. We got it rented out about mid-March in 2021, a year lease for, I believe it was $9.75 a month and they paid all the utilities. They also took care of the lawn mowing the lawn, landscaping, and snow removal, which is a big one up here in Fargo. So it was cash flowing from day one. I did have to, I did have to purchase a couple window unit ACs because it got super hot in the summer. But other than that, not a lot of huge expenses since we was freshly rehabbed. A couple things that I did get calls on throughout the year that they were living there was the plumbing kind of backed up a little bit. Tree roots grow into the pipes that go out to the sewer. So it just gets clogged with tree roots and you just got to come in actually have a plumber come in and just roto router the lines out. And it's 150 bucks and it takes an hour, so it's not a huge deal. Okay, so putting all the pieces together, here's the high level financial breakdown of this deal. We purchased for $22,000 in November, rehabbed it for $50,000 approximately, and took about three and a half months to finish. So we're all in about $72,000. The bank lent me 80% of the purchase price and 100% of the renovation. So my portion of all that was only $5,000. And I ended up with a loan for about $68,000. It cash flowed a little bit less since I thought my max loan should be around 60, but hard to go wrong with $5,000 into a deal only. The new value was about $25,000. And with $5,000 out of pocket and about 14 weeks of work, I created $55,000 in equity on this property. And when I go to sell, I can access that and get my $15,000 back returning my capital to me. My main strategy on this house is very similar to my last three. Basically buy it right at a deep discount, DIY some work and do some strategic renovations and also build as much equity as possible into this deal. Then after it's all fixed up, 
get great renters in there and cash flow the property. Next, I wanna sell multiple properties all at once and roll it into a big apartment building deal. Take all those proceeds, put them in one big lump, and then buy a big property. So flash forward one year and that's exactly what I'm doing. I sold the property just last week and here's the breakdown of the financials from that sale and also the increase in value over that one year of having it as a rental property. The sale price was $147,500. I paid 4,000 in closing costs for the buyer, 3,000 in extra repairs that they requested and about $3,500 to the real estate agent representing the buyer in commissions. And then I also listed and acted as my own real estate agent, so I only paid $500 there. About $800 in closing costs, and then I paid off the bank loan, which down from 68 was $66,000, so an extra 2,000 over that year in principal pay down while it was being rented. So my final proceeds from the sale, $72,083.96. <laughs> I get my $5,000 initial investment back on the sale, and my profit is $57,083 with 96 cents. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you think this was worth the effort. So even though the value went from 125 to 147 while it was being rented, the cost of selling the property plus $7,000 in concessions to the buyer brought my net profit down a lot. I had a ton of showings when I had it listed for sale and just a lot of interest, but this was the best offer and they were in right away, so I took it. And even though I had all those concessions and costs, it was still worth it in my mind. And since I'm lumping multiple properties together, I wanted to have everything selling at around the same time. So time was a factor as well. But this is just a judgment call based on your goals, your situation, your experience, and the property itself. All these things are just whatever fits your goals the best. Helping a new homeowner get into their first home is also awesome. I've met a couple of the people that I've sold houses to and just gives you the warm fuzzies. I don't know. You guys, this video was jam packed with so much good and valuable information. It might be hard to take it all in. If there's anything you missed or you didn't understand fully, that's completely normal. Go back and rewind it or listen to it a couple more times just to fully grasp any concepts that are a little over your head to start with because that's super normal and it happens to me still to this day and definitely happened when I was still learning. So that's it, you guys, how I turned $5,000 into $55,000 with one property. Hopefully you can learn from this and it'll help get you closer to financial freedom goals that you have. So let's take a quick recap to see what you guys all learned in this video. Number one, how to find a motivated seller through direct mail marketing. Number two, how to calculate the numbers for purchase price, loan amount, cash flow, after repair value. Number three, how to make an offer to purchase a distressed property off market. Number four, how to rehab the house. Five, how to find a great tenant after it's already rehabbed. And then number six, most importantly probably, is how to start thinking like an investor. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. You'll find everything you need to take action and find financial freedom through real estate investing on my channel. The like button tells YouTube I'm doing a good job and the bell icon will give you a heads up the next time my videos are released. And you're not gonna wanna miss those. Okay, bonus time, here are some bonus tips. Your exit strategy is super important to think about. If you're selling a property for $250,000 or under, it's gonna go pretty easily, especially if it's been renovated. The more expensive the house, the harder it is to sell, generally speaking, but the first time home buyer budget is usually in high demand most of the time. So that's a safer bet. It takes a ton of time to really internalize these concepts and a lot of repetition. So watch this video a couple times and go check out my channel for other stuff like this. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. And I wanna leave you guys with one big bonus tip before you go. Always network and seek out other opportunities. This project would be the actual catalyst for my next deal. I had a buddy over just to check out the progress and see how things were going and hang out. And during the conversation, he told me he had a couple properties he bought and only wanted to keep one. And he wholesaled one to me and it would end up being my next flip. So just doing a deal one thing leads to another. Having other colleagues or friends over to check out your progress and see what you're doing can potentially lead you to the next deal. And so I'll do another video on that flip, but I made $30,000 on that deal that he sold me and it all came from that one conversation during this deal. So, so that's the video. I hope you learned something very valuable and a couple more tools to help get you to your financial freedom goals moving forward. Thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next one.